two red lines. That's weird. I think it says I'm pregnant when two red lines come up. Kalia watched dazed. In her hand she was carrying the instruction sheet. Kalia carefully read the text behind it. She looked at the two clear lines on the test paper and the letters on the back of the kit several times. Soon she muttered the two words that clearly described the situation before her eyes. I'm pregnant. The paper that Kalia was holding fell to the floor. She was recognized by the emperor during the last seven years of war. In a mansion, the gorgeous chandelier sparkled in the sun. She closed her eyes for a while and slowly took a deep breath, and again looked at the paper that fell on the floor. It was obvious, two bright red lines that couldn't be taken away. Oh my god, I'm pregnant. The moment she realized it, embarrassingly, the first thing that filled her up was joy. A baby. Kalia jumped out of bed without knowing. As she breathed heavily, her lungs swelled rapidly and expanded. She felt a tickling sensation spreading all over her body as if she was buried in sweet cotton candy. It also felt as if someone had hit her hard with a hammer. At the same time, her heart pounded. At first she thought it was nonsense but she was soon filled with wonder as her heart fluttered. A real baby. Here, is there a baby growing inside this? She then reached out her trembling hand and touched the skin on her firm stomach. Her fingertips trembled over the thought, the world, baby. I have a baby. Women were mostly infertile which was a result of the harsh training that repeated every day. It was the intense confrontation between men and women, and the stress of running through the battlefield filled with blood. As a result, the function of the uterus became weakened. To that extent, the Knights of the Loha's Empire had a reputation for training regardless of gender. It was able to defend the Imperial Kingdom from numerous invasions, and furthermore, the high reputation of the Imperial Knights made the neighboring countries terrified. And the person who contributed most to this cruel fame was the sword of the commander of the Red Lion Knights of Lohas, right there was Kalia, a genius soldier who is unparalleled in the history of the Lohas Empire, whether inspection or transcription, a great war hero who ended the Seven Year War. Kalia Kate was a vicious prosecutor, a just knight, a typical soldier the enemy most wanted to avoid. She was not aristocratic, but her force was terrible enough to be the commander-in-chief at her young age. As her overwhelming ability was built, she was not afraid of shedding any sweat and blood. Many times her body was broken and body parts had fallen and were struck. So Kalia assumed that she would not have a baby. Not only her, but also her doctor cried and shed a tear for her. So for her, this pregnancy was now near to a miracle from God. Kalia's body shook as she tried to suppress the joy that couldn't be concealed. The overwhelming excitement brought tears to her eyes that had never been shed for 20 years. She was also a poor orphan who had been poorly abandoned. As she thought of old memories being unable to sleep properly, she thought of one of her first memories. She was someone who was taller than her peers and was too strong and agile to think of as a child. Thus, at the age of six, she was able to secretly save the son of a duke who had been kidnapped by the back of his neck. Thanks to her, she had been able to learn swordsmanship from the age of six with the full support of a craftsman. Now she had became the commander-in-chief of some empire. Being a kind and humble orphan, she became a hero of the empire and was blessed with praise and more praise. A family, that fragile and primitive hope of hers had been quietly forgotten due to its own luxury. But one day, like her head had been struck a tremendous miracle came to her. Please God, in order not to shed tears as her face burned up, Kalia took a deep breath as she stood with her eyes closed. But her joy could not be concealed, and excitement did not subside. While she took a short breath, she couldn't stand it and eventually she screamed. Oh my gosh. Oh my god. Oh no. Let's calm down it's not good for your baby either. A baby, by the way. Nevertheless, she couldn't stop the feeling of her feet floating. She tried to be as self-assured as possible, but only 27 rounds of the big living room allowed her relax and lean on a soft chair. So, let's think about the remaining issues from this point on. The problem is with the baby's father. When she recalled the man who was supposed to be the child's father, a sound came from out of her. The good news was with that, that man she had a relationship with but there was only one thing she was unhappy about. The unfortunate thing about this was that he isn't Kalia's lover. What's even more unfortunate is that he is the first great wizard of the LOHAS Empire, the Duke, and a war hero alongside her. And even more unfortunate than that was that he was the kid of the same duke who she had saved at the age of six and is now her best friend. Yes, Kalia felt like she was nothing but trash, as she thought of the fact that she was to conceive her best friend's child. Thanks to an only one night mistake. Oh, fuck. Unknowingly, Kalia apologized Ah, I'm sorry to curse, sweetheart. Your mother went into the battlefield, so my mouth is a little grievous. I'm sorry, really sorry beautiful baby. I will not. I'll be careful in the future. The world's the most precious thing. In my world and in my heart she only wanted to deal with life in its best language. 
It was the first time she ever felt in her life that she had never had to defeat and kill someone. Flushing, she couldn't figure out the particular emotion of the hot feeling in her chest. The emotion inside of her making her feel that she was about to boil in a moment. Whatever happens, I will protect the child. No matter what, she would swear on the sword on her chest. The baby was so precious to her, like a miracle that had come to find her. Even though it was due to some kind of overnight magic that just seemed to have happened by chance. Kalia rubbed her chin. But, he's a dad, I have to tell Simon too. Simon was a man wasn't intoxicated in the lives of aristocracy. As she knew him best as she grew up with him. The overall atmosphere of the Duke, with the exception of Simon, was a shame. There was a cold glass wall that distinguished him to others and that was always with a friendly smile. Would such a duke allow an illegitimate child to be his only successor? Would that be the child of Kalia, who had been fooling around in the corner of the mansion? To tell Simon, but he had loyalty to God. No way, Kalia. The thought whispered in her head as Kalia glanced up. No, never. Kalia's thoughts lingered as she murmured. She didn't know what Simon's reaction would be like. Would he like the baby? As she pondered, she shook her head. He was far from wanting a baby. He didn't even like humans themselves. Wouldn't Simon tell me to erase it? But surely she could force him to see the joy. She didn't mean to get pregnant. A baby should be a blessing. If joy itself was forced and forced on by somebody, surely the baby could not be hated as soon as it was born. So she did not want to force Simon into taking the father's position, forcing responsibility and duty onto him. She had had enough of the war rewards from the past seven years and now had the power needed to protect herself. Although the future would be unstable, she would swear a full and flawless affection for her child. Her decision was firm. Yes, she meant that she wouldn't have to force Simon to marry her and be the father. Marrying Simon. It was too strange that she began to tremble. On the battlefield, the two were comrades, like siblings when they were young, and sometimes as friends who could drink together and talk all night. That's all. But she said that there would not be no greed and there would be no demands on him. Its existence itself could not be nice. That would be enough if you considered his high position and all the responsibilities heavily hung on his shoulders. Furthermore, the last time Simon and her met, she thought that they were very early from marriage. So she shed little light on the idea of there being a wedding. She had an inkling that had been in her mind for a long time. It would become even more impossible to force Simon to marry her. For someone with a loved one, they would always be threatened by violence. Well, I don't think I'll telling Simon any time soon. Kalia frowned with her hands on her stomach as if she were protecting her unborn child. If she were told to erase the child from the house, or even make an unpleasant decision. How much do you think I'm going to have to cut off Simon? Making a plan she ran it through step by step. Kalia, who was worried about how to kill him in earnest, shook her head in anger. The instinct to protect the child had surpassed her reason. She just thought that he might be forced to erase the child. But in that case she wouldn't know how to live. That would be the same for Simon. In front of the mirror, she slowly swept into her uniform, which gave her a neat yet strangely gorgeous look. A few years ago, her uniform had been made by Dear Empire Wizard Simon. Kalia closed the buttons on her clothes and with her new look, she looked at the buttons at her fingertips. The buttons had been made of real gold, instead of a golden coloring. Why did he uselessly make the buttons from gold? Though how many times did he say that pure gold was easy to store magic? Kalia, since when was your brain ever just a lump of muscle? Why can't you remember it like her told you 30 times? Ah, uh, are you kidding me? Yes, you're being treated as an idiot. The voice of Simon rised in a blatant way. Kalia laughed synonymously. How could she have spent the night with such a guy was still a mystery. Even with that kid's child in her stomach. Kalia laughed intently and scrutinized her clothing in the mirror. She tightly tightened her waist, wearing her gorgeous red cloak and black leather pants which stuck to her legs. As such, there was always no disturbance. Silence. Kalia dusted off the cloak and looked up at the blue sky outside her window. It was late afternoon and the sky was so green and peaceful that the perfect word struck her. Peaceful. Yes, maybe after seven years of war and everything was peaceful now, it was a good time for the name war hero to disappear. Kalia left the room with a happy smile. Oh my god. Did she come out in uniform? The Red Lion Knight General's Conquest. It's already been a year since the war ended. The end of the war was proclaimed and Kalia rarely went out in uniform. Her long limbs stretched out elegantly, and her limbs, which seemed to be skinny, were firmly positioned and showed great charm no matter what clothes she wore. She was a siren, a sea witch, whose face was a harmonious combination of thin lemon-colored hair, pure white skin and red lips. But the coolest moment was when she held her sword, as the atmosphere would suddenly change. At that time she was just a warrior. 
The sword's trajectory was neat and perfect. She was a goddess of battle, a beautiful monster created by God. If I could look that stunning in my photos, I wouldn't have another wish. One by one they all thought that the clothes suited her best any day. What made Kalia so fascinating was her charm. When Kalia finally descended to the floor, she hummed and ran quickly and jogged. General, are you going to go out now? I'll get it prepared for you. I'll get ready to go out right away. Because of her shyness, Kalia tended to be good at scanning those who came into her territory. Slightly stroking one's head or patting their shoulders was an expression of her affection and expression of trust. At such times, people who were curious blushed or watched on with an ugly expression. But the dull Kalia didn't know why. Well, then, I'll bring White from the stables. Please wait, master. There were a bundle of things she had to attend to that couldn't be forgotten. Without thanking the good squire, Kalia looked cute as she hummed, with an air of innocence she once had when she was young. As he smiled watching towards the direction of the humming, the sound grew louder as he returned with Kalia's horse White. The giant, white horse, handed down by his majesty, stood before Kalia with a steadfast step as usual. The horse, which observed her with its pitch-black eyes, exhaled through its nose with excitement. It was not an elegant and calm horse. Kalia snorted and paused before she rode on its back, finding White so adorable. Ah, uh, right, she sighed heavily and said to the young squire, handing him back her horse. I'm sorry, put White back. Will you prepare a carriage? A carriage? Yes, Kalia rarely chose to ride in a carriage. No, to be honest, she had never traveled in one. That's why he questioned and asked her if he had heard wrong. Kalia nodding said, Prepare a carriage, please. Ah yes, okay. He watched her puzzled but went off to carry out her request. Watching his back as the sounds of his footsteps drew fainter, Kalia sighed and gently touched her flat belly. She was about to ride a horse without thinking. No matter how ignorant, she was pregnant. She knew that running or riding horses was dangerous. No matter how talented people were, riding horses were meant to shock the body. I should be more careful in the future. Soon she climbed carefully onto the carriage he had brought. If you're to travel in a carriage, I will be the one to do it. Will you allow me? As she sat down on the coach's seat, the carriage quickly arrived at the imperial palace while Kalia, sitting in the carriage humming, thought over what she would say to the prince. Welcome, general. A huge gate was opened and the carriage carrying Kalia entered the imperial palace, but soon stopped soon after. Her humming soon stopped as Kalia headed out of the carriage. Kalia, who had escorted the prince since childhood, was deeply involved with him. The road to his villa was nothing new to her. It took about the same time, as she retraced her footsteps entering from the entrance through the corridor that lead to the main palace. From the other side of the corridor, a crowd of several wives, embellished with bright dresses and jewelry, their aristocratic sons escorting them, as they discussed aloud. What in the world? Helena your necklace is fantastic. Why don't you choose a bracelet that goes well with it? There is also this magic seal, the peacock's magic seal. It's been engraved. How precious must that gift be? It is. It was the first time I've seen Simon's magical works up so close. Isn't it worth hundreds of dollars apiece? How envious would you be if you knew that the young ladies would be presented a bracelet with Simon's seal directly from Dame Helena? It was just a small gift for her journey. It's no big deal. Kalia walked in front of the chattering woman, a particularly beautiful woman that had graceful black hair, and stopped. At that moment, despite the silence, Kalia walked in with a steady gaze. Sorry, I was in thought, I did not see Dame Helen. How are you? She watched her from head to toe, her eyes much darker than Kalia's light green, sparkled with amusement. Looking at her in thought she said, Yes, come to me at once. Are you injured anywhere? Did you manage to eat the cookies I sent last time? Approaching her, she reached out and stroked her hand a little over Kalia's cheek. Her eyes were as sweet as a worried mother. Her touch on her cheeks although were incredibly hard, fragrant and very cold at the same time. Madam Helena. The dark green eyes clearly showed that she was of half-elf origin. Although over 40 years old, she was a mysterious woman who held the beauty of a 20-year-old and had been praised as the queen of high society. She was also Simon's mother. She was the particular character that would become the grandmother of the baby in Kalia's stomach and was the hostess of the ball, where she had been born and raised. General Kalia, you've come at a good time. Come and play, Kalia. I want to cook for you myself who always manages to protect the prince, protects the country and protects our Simon. Horberts, who stood out behind her admired her kind words. He said, You are so sweet, Madam Helena. I've heard from Kalia how Dame Helena is like her own mother. Of course, General is one of our proud craftsmen in addition to Simon. She is a beautiful person but grew up with Simon. 
as if like her own brother. How can you not know? It's a famous story. If you're talking about the friendship between Madame's Duke Simon and General Kalia, it's a staple fact among the social circles. Oh, so I guess I've been talking too loudly. If it's a staple, Helena smiled happily, biting her lower lip as if it were embarrassing. Kalia had silently looked at such a Helena. Home, I'm proud of our craftsmen. It is true that she grew up in their household but did not grow up with Simon and treated him like her own brother, like Helena had said. She had always used the end room of the sunless annex and used the same place to eat her meals. When she spent time attending to balls, especially during school vacation, she had to get permission from Helena to meet Simon, which house needed their mother's permission to go to meet their own brothers. Even though she only heard it once, the fact that Kalia had also been included with us was questionable. Actually, it wasn't too far from fiction that a girl from the slums, from a family of peasants had saved his life once. Although, she was not the owner of such a romantic novel, and that was that. Supposedly in that sense Kalia had, had to be the fifth child of the emperor, as she had saved the third prince's life four times. Kalia curved her lips and smiled. Helena stroking the back of her cheek she said almost whispering, holding on to the back of her hand. Thank you for your concern. If you have time, I'll see you soon. It's a promise. It's a must. It's too late and I must chat with Michelle, so if you'll excuse me first. Helena stared at Kalia, not knowing what to look for in her eyes, but Kalia smiled indifferently. Yes, I hope you enjoyed your stay. Helena replied with a dark smile, as if her response was very unsatisfactory. No way. Then I hope you're good. Helena squeaked by the side of Kalia. At the moment, Kalia's head ached with pain as she frowned. Her voice was soon drowned out by the wind and the sound of waves, her hearing like sand that disappeared in no time. Kalia, who squeezed one ear frowning as she left, instinctively looked back. With a bunch of noisy followers, Helena had already gone. The strange hallway which grew empty was now silent. Their dresses fluttered like colored petals. The wives wore beautiful lace as if they wanted their dress to be the most stylish. Yet their trinkets seemed to abide by the certain rules that they should not be more beautiful than Dame Helena's who was at the center of the crowd. Helena Turlone was the beautiful wife of the previous Duke of Turlone who was dying of an illness, a close relative of the royal family. Her son and Duke Turlone were magicians, who were powerful enough to change history and had become a young minister of the imperial enchantment. The beautiful middle-aged woman attracted people from any place. She always wore an elegant tone on her smiley face and was kind to anyone, but people were afraid of her. Even the Marquis Carl Bert, the socialite, would turn into a gentle sheep in front of Helena. When she laughed, the socialists laughed. When she cried, the socialists also shed tears. Stopping her steps, they all stopped and looked at what she was looking at, even if she didn't speak like now. Madam, is there anything you have left behind? There is nothing behind you. It was a long walk, and the western villa was very far away, but the wives were to be her eyes to go back as far as Helena wanted. Still, very quietly, looking at somewhere on the second floor of the western villa, she turned away with a bloody smile. I saw you. At Helena's confusing words, people looked at each other and shook their heads but couldn't ask her directly what she had meant by that. Hiding. Helena had already taken steps, and they also followed her. As soon as she entered the door to the main palace, a window opened somewhere on the second floor of the villa, which Helena looked out at. The wide window on the open terrace fetched in a rich breeze and made the draped curtains dance. In addition the white chiffon also fluttered, as hundreds of documents piled up on the desk were scattered in the air. In the shadows the golden hair of Prince Louimond, who sat at his desk, looking at documents, grew disturbed by the wind. A smidge of sun hit Louimond's blonde hair like honey and sparkled. The prince then swiped his beautiful hair with one big finger and took a short sigh and looked up. Ha! Huh. He shot his cousin a dirty look, who had turned his back towards him whilst grabbing the terrace railings, like the sea watching the land. Standing with his back turned, he saw only his silver hair shining like a gift under the sunlight. His wide shoulders and straight back were terribly beautiful. Simon, why did you suddenly open the window? Put the flying documents down right now. His back turned, the man did not answer, but lifted his hand which bounced lightly. The movement of the papers that were scattered in the air, with the crinkling of paper, soon stopped. Shaking his fingers gently, the papers moved back to their original positions, as if they had been reversed in time. Louisman recounted bitterly, turning his eyes to the hundreds of papers that were bothering him. Can't you go? Huh? But why aren't you? He noticed his slight excitement and knew there was only one thing that didn't make him so cold and indifferent to the world. Louimond, who had left his signature on the confirmation paper with a large fountain pen, suddenly spat out that person's name. 
Are you waiting for Kalia? Simon's head, which was fixed on one of the particular words, turned slightly to the side. Only his silhouette stayed the same. His mouth shook slightly, murmuring. I am delighted that the emperor of the future of this empire is so attentive. When does Kalia come? Although, his mouth said something his eyes didn't move from the paper. The three things that had to be done by the prince all required great skill but the prince still suffered from his work. A subject that could never die or tell the truth. All in all, Simon was quite confident about Kalia. So it was true that Kalia was a typical craftsman who only knew how to fight with swords. Standing at the forefront of the war without an hour of doubt and by her side an invisible glass wall called Simon, which allowed no one to approach her even Prince Louisman who was on a horse. In that sense, he knew that his confidence allowed him to be the only male left close to Kalia. But the confidence that Simon showed seemed a bit different these days. Somehow, Kalia seemed to have a heart. I guess something must have happened a couple of months ago. To be precise, it's almost since the victory party for Kalia, who came back after sweeping the floor during the maritime battle about two months ago. For some reason, there had been days when Simon was strangely angry, or stared at the sky or even closed his eyes as he thought of something. Then, even if he saw Kalia, he was either frustrated or was very upset. But in contrast, Kalia had been in a similar pattern for two months. No, in fact, Kalia had dealt with Simon for ten years in a consistent manner. He couldn't understand why that great young minister had been so confident these few days. Well, I've got things to do, like the prince, so don't mind me. Anyway, coming here was enough as he was able to see her face. But I was going to see you in the evening because of a business trip tomorrow. Good. I hope you leave my office as I have meeting soon, he said. No, that did not mean to get out. Done. I don't want to be involved in your business. So I'll go. As the guards announced that Kalia had arrived, Simon was scared and indecisive as to stay. Simon, who laughed at the thought, climbed onto the railing. Why does something happen while I have to go? getting ready for a dramatic encounter. I want to leave through the door. But I don't want to meet like this, but I want us to meet with each other. Oh, what are you going to talk to Kalia about later? Let me know. By the will of his majesty, Louis Mon gained victory in the fight with his brothers to become the crown prince. The biggest contributor to his victory was Simon and the commander-in-chief Duke Turlon. The three had been struggling from a young age and together drew the future of the empire. Louis Mon got up from his seat and jumped down the terrace to gaze at Simon who was walking through the garden, a man with silver hair that glittered like the surface of a smooth lake. Only those who had reached the line of enlightenment would have gotten a special color like that. Come in, General Kalia. He hated how Louis Mond was by her side and he no idea why. No one could destroy that man's love for Kalia. Louis Mond then turned around and looked at someone beyond the closed door. Then as always, with a moderately friendly smile. Come in. Kalia, looking at Louis Mond's blue eyes, opened her lips slowly. I came to ask for early retirement. The pen stopped moving round and round in Louis Mon's hand. After a brief pause, he tilted his head as if he had heard wrong. No, your majesty, you've heard right. At that moment, the pen that barely touched his fingers dropped. As it rolled over his desk, it fell to the floor. Then he rolled his eyes and came up to look at Kalia, analyzing her. Then she walked up and down and placed it gently in front of the prince who had stiffened by the shock. As fast as possible. He didn't wish for her to leave. In a hurry to stand up, Louis Mon's chair fell back. The situation was so urgent that the prince's feet had been caught when he tried to stand up from his desk. Kalia, who grabbed his hand at his side in his unsteady manner, quickly supported his waist. Are you okay? As Kalia instinctively protected him, she looked at his pale complexion and Louis Mond, who stared back at her close face, woke up. My, no, Kalia. I have a problem. What are you talking about? Retirement. Kalia looked at Louimond, who was screaming, looking as pale as a sheet. How angry must the prince have been who usually kept calm, as he latched onto her strongly. Louimond then grabbed her forearm and said, Why? Why all of a sudden? I want to rest. Oh, Kalia. He said as she didn't mention the need for a vacation. If needed. No, I'd like to retire. Louisman then began to coax her nervously, as if he hadn't heard her request. Why, would you want to travel far? Anywhere you want, you'll get support with everything from the Imperial Palace. Where do you want to go? Just tell me, Kalia. Kalia politely shook her head. No, it's fine. Kalia's gaze lowered as she unconsciously touched her lower stomach. To be honest, she felt nothing yet. It wasn't obvious. It was just a feeble, very feeble sense of joy and made Kalia's heart tremble. But Kalia wanted to catch it right away. It was her little hope that she could give birth to the child. The very hope of wanting a family. For how long? This may be seen as a huge retirement, but I will come back whenever you need me. 
but it won't be for a short period of time. I want to leave, she said, declaring her retirement. Suddenly her saying she wanted to leave the palace and the thought that she would be gone one morning. Louisman did not say anything but he pressed a hand on his chest and rolled his head coldly. No, I'd like to retire. All you should say. What is the reason? He looked at Kalia with his eyes wide open to try and find any small clue. But he couldn't read anything from her. As he looked at her straight in the eyes, with her rosy lips and calm eyes, frustrated Louisman then asked with a relaxed voice, Why did you make that decision suddenly? I don't think I can tell you more. But I can swear that I'm not betraying the country or the imperial family. Kalia, I also have never thought you'd betray. As she heard the words of Louisman's mouth, Kalia thought, do you? Even if she couldn't talk about it in detail, she should say something about it. No, it seems you have your priorities. What are you going to do now? Towards the disheveled Louis Mond, since Kalia entered the room she showed him her first laugh. Start a family. It was the first time Louis Mond had ever seen her smile so widely, as if she had the whole world. Behind the quietly closed door, Kalia walked down the hallway with a light step. Okay, I've jumped over one hurdle. Because their chat was longer than what she thought, the sky had become dim, but the hallway was lit with magical lights. Soon the rainy season would begin. In the months before the rainy season began, the days were short and long. The Empire's rainy season was always short but intense. The sky would be dark for about 2-3 weeks and the rain would never stop. Unprotected crops would rot as a result of the water and in case of heavy rain, the waterside village could become submerged. The Empire's magical department supported many number of spells throughout the country to minimize the damage caused during the rainy season. It was at this period of time the magic department was at its busiest. You have to leave before the rainy season begins. You can't leave when the rainy season begins, otherwise it would have been too late. It's bound to fall so heavily. I have a lot to prepare. First, I think I'll have to meet Simon for the last time. As the landscape came into view, Kalia came slowly down the stairs, thinking. Her steps were heavier than usual and for some reason she found it difficult to go on. Beyond the huge, colorful window, something glistening under the bright moonlight caught her eye. Her steps, from her stretched out legs, stopped just as quickly. Approaching the window without her knowing soaking in the moonlight, she looked at the beautiful man who had a snow-like complexion with silver hair. The man who had a sharp and delicate beauty loosely loosened the upper button of his shirt, casually dressed in a dress shirt and trousers. Standing in the center of a magnificent rose garden between the pagoda and the main palace, he inadvertently looked up at the moonlit night sky with his hands in his trouser pocket, breathing in the scent, drinking in the night air and looking at the moon. That man standing so carelessly, staring at the sky was the young chief of the magic department who was the right-hand man of the empire and the father of Kalia's child. It was the Duke of Turlon. Simon. Okay, now, this is a scroll that erases the traces of one's identity. It's impossible to trace with magic and detection dogs up to a radius of 20 kilometers. His cool fingertips that seemed to know the future pointed to the scrolls one by one. And this is another scroll. If you have coordinates, you can move quickly up to 100 km2. This is a green healing scroll, you know. Honestly, it's the most expensive one here. Kalia, as if she was drunk, opened the small box that Simon handed her. There were four magic scrolls that seemed too expensive to ignore. The Tanya scroll. It was the same gift every year, a magic scroll. Maybe he had stolen it from one of the imperial warehouses. One of Simon's delicate eyebrows pushed up like he had read her suspicious eyes. He bluntly said, self-made. Handmade. Made by the wizard. Simon raised his chin with arrogance, pounding his chest. His beauty was as brilliant as it could be. She'd remembered how one day when she had thrown away the remains of the cookies she'd eaten. She'd heard the shouts of ladies discussing Simon, describing him as being cynical, indifferent, sensitive, colorful, and sexy. Kalia did not want to deal with those thoughts of Simon and pointed at the summoning scroll. I know, are you saying it's a calling scroll? You're right. Simon smiled, as if complimenting her. His eyelashes were full and made a slight shadow under his thin eyes. His golden pupils shone with a soft glow. Even his devil-like mouth that often crept up at her showed her a smile that was as cool as any picture. Yes, she admitted it. Her childhood friend was beautiful enough for her to see him as a man. He continued, swearing it's not bound by radius. You just have to rip this up and you can call me. Even if you're on the other side, beyond the continent. He reached out and touched her soft cheek with his fingertips. I can find you, Kalia. It was with the same hand that touched her cheek that Simon had touched all over her body. She didn't know why, but anyway, it felt strange. Why are you touching my cheek anyway? What are you hiding? Why do you ask? Simon sighed as he gazed back at her. Blockhead, what are you talking about all of a sudden? 
Kalia shook her head because she found it so absurd. But Simon turned away as if he wasn't happy with her response. The simple and ignorant Kalia only knew about her sword and of war. Hey Simon, we've talked after a long time. Kalia was a bit embarrassed and tried to tease him, but he didn't respond to anything. As she thought of what best to say in the language, it was impossible to interpret what she felt with words. She knew best not to touch Simon when he was angry, so she left him alone. She should just avoid him. Kalia wandered around the lab, avoiding Simon, who slithered alone and watched the back of her head. He needed time to calm down. What's this? She found a bunch of scrolls piled up by chance, picking up one of the scrolls that piqued her interest. That will be all for now. I hope you find this story interesting. Leave a like, subscribe and enable notifications so you won't miss the next part of this story. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye.